yeah. Okay, so what we're actually going to be doing right now is talking to you about our teaching English in Korea experiences. I worked at a public school, um, an elementary school, which is called the Chodong Hakyo, which means Chodong Hakyo literally translates as elementary school. And Audrey worked in at a Hagwon, which is a private after school academy. Yes. So we worked in totally different working environments and we're going to talk to you a bit about um, the different experiences we had. Okay, Teaching hours! Teaching hours! So first thing we're going to talk about is teaching hours. What was your schedule like? Well, at my school I would start teaching at 1.30 in the afternoon and I would be finished by 9.30 in the evening. Um, this is done because that's when the kids finish public school. They're free in the afternoons. And right. So when you work in a private school in Korea, your hours are scheduled around your children, around the children's schedule or the adult schedule. If you're teaching in an adult school, Audrey worked in a school for children, so they were all obviously all of her hours were after public school hours. So, mm -hmm. if you're an early bird. This wouldn't be the schedule for you, but if you're someone who likes to sleep in or stay out really late, drink a little makju or soju, <laughs> her schedule is way better. <laughs> Wait, if you're an early bird? How does that make sense? No, if you're an early bird, then it's not good, I said. Okay. Jeez. <laughs> okay, anyways. <laughs> so my, my schedule at a public school, would what, would what would be... Your standard government office hours. I work from 8.40 until 4.40. Basically 9 to 5, your 9 to 5 job. Meaning I had to get up fairly early, um, but I finished work early. Finished work around dinner time. So, you know, different hours between the two different jobs. <laughs> okay. Okay, so next we will be talking about holidays because there's a big difference, a massive difference between the amount of holidays you get between a Haiwan and a public school. Yeah, and someone kicked butt over the other person. Can you guess who won? Who won? Do I look happy? No. No. So at a public school, you get way more vacation time. I got four weeks, four scheduled weeks of vacation. So what, but what I mean by that is, I'm not talking weekends. Sometimes in Korea, Weekends are a bit iffy. Is that a vacation? No, it's not. I got actual Monday through Friday days off. Um, I received four weeks. How about you? Yeah, well, I, I was only allowed 10 days off during the year. But of those 10 days, five of them were selected by my director. So that only left me with five days I could pick. And I wasn't allowed to take any of those five days together. They had to be spread out through the year and they always had to be pre-approved. So I was never guaranteed my vacation. I always had to fill out lots of paperwork and wait and see what happened. So technically, I never had more than three days off, including the weekends. <laughs> okay, that was my vacation. <laughs> uh, 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 uh. Doesn't sound very good, does it? Well, the other thing too is that in addition to the extra holidays that I had over Audrey's schedule, um, I was also given days off for, for example, on there was a Korean election day. There was, uh, we had a school holiday, just a, a holiday that's specific to our school. So there was all kinds of additional holidays that I received uh, in excess of what Audrey had. Yes, and every time he had this special day off, I was at work. Yep, and I didn't yeah. feel guilty about it, so. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> Okay, next we're going to talk about working conditions and teaching hours. So let's hear the perspective from the Hagwon. Okay, well at the Hagwon I'm the only teacher in the classroom. I don't have a Korean co-teacher to keep the students in order and have them behave or explain anything they may not understand. Um, but you do have smaller classes. I do have smaller classes, that is a plus. My classes, they vary in size. Sometimes I only have two students, sometimes I can have 12. Right. So it's, it's a more manageable number. It's more manageable, yeah, in that sense. Um, on the other hand, for the most part, I was teaching regular classes. And by regular classes, I mean I was teaching uh, a homeroom class from my school, for example, a grade 3 class, a grade 6 class. So I would have the Korean co-teacher come into the class, but I would also have a much larger class, probably 30 plus students on average. Mm -hmm. 
but there were some benefits to teaching with the Korean code teacher. Generally speaking, not, not in all cases, but generally speaking, the Korean code teacher does a, a, a really quite an excellent job of settling down the students. So even though I'm teaching a large class, a lot of times the school discipline, uh, the classroom discipline, I should say, is taken care of by the Korean mm -hmm. co-teacher, which is really nice, mm -hmm. obviously. But you still need to have class. Basically, whether you're teaching in a public school or in a hagwon, you still have to have good classroom management skills or the kids will walk all over you, <laughs> which they have to me in the past and also in Audrey's classes yes. too. we will talk a bit about lesson planning. So at my Hagwon, I wasn't really responsible for planning any of the lessons. I was just given textbooks that I needed to follow. So there was very little preparation time. Like every once in a while, I would bring in a game or something mm. to change things up a bit. But for the most part, you just follow what's in the book. So it's really straightforward. Yeah, on the other hand, I did have to do more lesson planning. Um, I was involved, in fact, in creating and planning all of the lessons for all of my regular classes. And then for some of my after-school programs, I was also the coordinator. So I, would, I definitely did more lesson planning than Audrey this year. So next we will be talking about pay. It is relatively similar between the Haiwan and the public schools, right. but it also depends on your experience. How many years have you been teaching? And also, do you hold a TESOL diploma or certificate? Exactly. So generally for your first year Korean, ex uh, uh, generally for your first year teacher coming to Korea, you're going to be looking at a salary of roughly 2 million won per month. And that's roughly 2,000 US dollars. Sometimes you get a little bit higher, 2.1, 2.2 million, sometimes a little bit less, 1.9, but roughly it's around 2.0 million Korean won. And as you get more experience, as you get your, you know, you have more experience in Korea, you have several years of teaching. If you also go ahead and get your TESOL, or if you have a master's degree, or something very specific to teaching English, for example, an education degree, or an English literature degree, you can expect your pay to go up several hundred dollars a month. Um, for example, at my, at my latest Korean job uh, at a public school, I was earning 2.4 million a month. So a bit higher than Audrey's uh, pay. 2.1 million, baby. There you go. <laughs> I, I earn 300,000 Korean won more per month, but I've also taught in Korea longer and I have a little bit more credentials behind my belt. More than me, though. <laughs> Anyways, there are, I mean, the benefits, there's different benefits of working in a Hagwon or a public school. Overall, we tend to favor public schools, though. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But there are, I'll give you some advantages of, of the Hagwon. So the Hagwons are great if it's your first teaching assignment. You don't have to do as much lesson planning. There are more jobs available in Korea for those willing to work in Hagwons. Also, it's easier to find work in select locations. If you want to be in Seoul, if you want to be in a specific city, for example, the Hagwon is the job for you because they have a lot more, there are a lot more opportunities. Mm -hmm. Another good thing about Hagwons is that you will be working with other foreign teachers. So if it's your first time in the country, you'll be able to meet people and make some friends. That's a good point. Yeah. Whereas at a public school, it's often just one foreign teacher teaching all In the, the rare case, there's two. In my school, there's two, but that was a, I taught in a huge school with a student base of over a thousand. So, yeah. Um, advantages of the public school, though, are, are numerous. First off, um, more professional working conditions. It's not a business. It is a school, first, first and foremost. The next benefit is obviously the vacation time, a lot more vacation time. Um, the, another benefit too is that I didn't, when, I, when, when some semesters were, when I was in between semesters, I didn't have to teach regular classes, so I put in quite a few office hours. I was using that to plan, but I also had a lot of free time as well. Movie time, as we call it, desk warming time. But overall, if you're thinking of coming to teach English in Korea, what do you think? Should we, do we recommend it? Yes, for sure. I mean, it's a great way to save money over the year. They will take care of your apartment, so you're just paying for your food and a few utilities. Right. So, so if, you, if, you live, if you live like a local, that means you eat mostly local food. You go out drinking every once in a while, not too often. 
and you do a little bit of domestic travel, you can expect to save well over, well over half of your paycheck for the year, if not sure. more. And that will allow you to pay off student loans, it'll allow you to save for travel, it'll allow you to basically do whatever you want with that money. And it's an excellent way to experience culture halfway around the world. Mm -hmm.